133. I almost forgot to use words or how to use them because I've been gone so long. We're back, baby. We're back. Yeah, that's what the double horns are for. Welcome back, everyone. There's no title of this. We do have good stories, so I'm excited to get right into it. Let's meet the lineup and the roundtable. Daniel J. Lewis, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to have the roundtable again. I've been starving for this delicious RSS content on all of these plates we've got. <laughs> We're not quite RSS yet, but uh, recorded out of RSS, delivered to RSS, the roundtable. Straight to your ears, no matter how you like it. We got it for you. Eric, welcome to your first roundtable. Hey, thanks for having me. Eric Hunley, Unstructured Podcast. Very cool. Yes, and uh, I... You, you're on my show before I was on yours, and you invited me a long time ago. So that means I suck. Hey. <laughs> but uh, I did keep the sign up tab open for so long, and I just I kind of went I kind of went uh, cold for a few months here. So hopefully I'm more back in the groove here. Cool. Uh, Co host Dave Jackson, welcome back, man. Ray, Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting dot com, ready to to rock and roll tonight on the Podcasters Roundtable. I like that you changed <laughs> your name to Ray Dave Jackson. It is. It's it's. Uh... It's, it's a good cool. choice. Yeah, it's a it is. Very good choice. <laughs> you can call me Ray. You can call me Dave. You can call me Ray Dave. Take your pick. Ray Dave. I like it. All right. We merge. We're, be we're beginning to merge as one. <laughs> Dave and Ray. Uh, we lost someone. Oh, I lost Daniel. And that was it. He was too scared of that prop. Uh, that that was it. And, and he left. <laughs> Tricasters <laughs> unite. Him. Yeah. Nope. I'm not doing that. I'm not merging with you. <laughs> Sounds weird. All right. Uh, James, welcome to your first roundtable. How you doing, James Thomas? Four C's, one family out here in Taipei, Taiwan at 7.34 in the morning. That wow. is awesome. We are keeping it international still, Dave. We are rocking it. international. Eric, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Hampton Roads, Virginia, specifically right. Hampton. Oh, man, we have, we have left, middle, right side of the U.S. covered, and then the other side of the world. We are we're doing good here. Global. We are global. Look at everyone in the chat. So awesome to see Kim, Veronica. Stephanie Paul is here. Oh, very cool. And he's changing his name to Ray Dave Jackson. So <laughs> you better get that dot com. <laughs> I'm on it. Daniel's back. All right, cool. Let's let's dive in. Um, Eric, you want to lead off with a story that you listed on the document yes, here, and it's uh, it's called Adblock Radio is an ad blocker for live radio streams and podcasts. So what yeah, what I going on. <laughs> what I found most amusing about this story is a guy created, well, AI, and I have friends out there who get infuriated with the term AI because they're saying AI is not real. It's machine learning. AI is bogus. But essentially, it's a program to find ads within podcasts and automatically skip them. Okay, I, so he hates ads. I have That's a cool. For, first of all, yes, where sir. is this listening happening? Um, from what I tell... It's kind of vaguely yeah. put. It's uh, live radio podcast. Not sure. I'm thinking. I guess I'm thinking an embedded player is where you could implement this. It's open source. He's saying, right? So maybe only on an embedded sure. player. And we know people don't go to your website and listen to a podcast. So right. good luck getting True. your audience just to do that part of it. But I don't know. I don't know if this exists in apps. I mean, an app developer would have to put it in there. So. Well, unless he has a player itself and he could scrape your site or you could play right. somebody else's podcast through it. Right. But all That's, all these, be, the bigger problem being that like you're trying to make your audience go somewhere when podcasting is all about, I get to listen where and when I want, right? Oh, I agree. That's but your he hates message. ads. Yeah, that's his first problem. Yeah, he hates ads. Well, and the irony here, are you going to tell your audience, hey, if you don't like listening to the ads in our podcast, go listen in this other podcast app. Yeah. Oh, no. I, what I mo found most amusing about it was the justifications and hoops he went through to explain why he did it. It was really hilarious. It's like, okay, dude, you hate ads. ads. I get it. But no, he wrote, and I quote, Advertisers exploit auditory artifacts such as dynamic range compression and equalization to make their ads stand out of those of others, despite not being mathematically louder. He also feels that ads try to trigger impulse buying by exploiting our emotions and serendipitous discovery, short-circuiting our rational thoughts. He feels that these mind tricks are manipulative and disrespectful. How about you just say, I hate ads? Yeah. Well, yeah. Wait. <laughs> so if I get this straight, ads are trying to get us to buy stuff? No. Shocking. The nerve. I smell a conspiracy. 
That's, <laughs> that's why every every time you see a drug commercial now, if you noticed while they're reading off how all the side effects, they have somebody like blowing bubbles or running through a park, <laughs> like all these really happy things. And they're like, meanwhile, you know, explosive diarrhea, you know, and death. And you're like, what? Well, he yeah. says, and he says loudness wars, but I mean, if, if that was the case, then your app should just attenuate the sound of the commercial, mm -hmm. not get rid of it, right? If that is your real issue, you can fix it without nuking the ad. My problem is that if people are so desperate to skip your ads, you probably have the wrong advertiser. They are going to skip it anyways. Podcast ads are different in that a lot of people actually do listen to them. Now, I get it. This is for the people who just don't want to, who start from that, from that mindset. Um, also there's something weird about not supporting your podcaster. There are some platforms that put ads in that you don't even, you're not a part of. So sure. Um, but then you don't listen on that platform. So yeah, I don't, you know, I hate to automatically just like dismiss someone's work. I mean, maybe he's spent a lot of time and maybe he's got something here and it just immediately would just like sort of poo, poo the whole idea, but I don't, I don't see, it doesn't sound like something that would really work. Um, and it's harmful. Big. It yeah. is genuinely potentially harmful. Yeah, I don't get it to uh, the podcaster that does have dynamically inserted ads or does have ads, and they need to get a check. So it can really affect people. This is a big thing that's going across everywhere, even on YouTube. You know, it's like people are complaining about the different changes in algorithms, and everybody's talking about jumping to other places where they can just be alone and everything like that. I mean, we need you need ads. Somebody needs to get paid, or else who's going to pay for all this wonderful equipment and stuff? It's really heartbreaking. Or the platform itself doesn't exist, right? We're using StreamYard. Okay, so Google Hangouts gone. We're using StreamYard. Um, there is a premium feature to this. We're not using it currently, but I mean, if they don't make money, they're gone. And this option doesn't easily exist. I mean, when Hangouts left, because Google does stuff free, that's awesome a lot of times, but if they mm. don't make money, basically from ads, they're gone too. And they killed Hangouts and you almost killed the, the round table Google, but I didn't let it happen. But you know, <laughs> Streamlab, StreamYard, either lucky for them that Hangouts yeah. went away, um, but no one makes it easy. The, StreamYard makes it, as close to Hangouts as you can get. I mean, it's virtually the same thing. And obviously there are features we'd like to see changed or I'd like to see changed and updated, but they're not going to exist if they can't make money. And then we're not, we're going to be out of platform again. And yeah, we all remember Blab. Yeah. Do we? <laughs> we do, James. We do. <laughs> Rest in peace. Well, we there's do. Get Vocal. That's a, a new variant of it. If yes. you guys haven't tried it. There's Only that four in, people though. Isn't, isn't there like Be Live? dot tv or something yeah. there's another one that's similar oh belive dot tv is just another stream yard in fact yeah. stream yard actually i would say is another belive dot tv because yeah. belive has been around longer than stream yard yeah hmm. so the way i mean the, just the integration the way this goes into youtube with i mean it's just it has made almost i haven't had to skip a beat because of how simple stream yard is so i'm enjoying that yeah I, I should try some other things but that's what we got for now Anyways, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's it. I mean, I don't really know. I don't know what to tell a podcast. There's nothing to know here. I mean, besides I, that I, guy I, hate ads. He really hates <laughs> ads. Like, yeah. Like you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of new podcasts recently, or new to me. That is highly popular podcasts. I'm trying to broaden my interests and perspectives and try some things to see why is this so popular and what makes it so fun and are all of these comedians actually funny in their podcast mm -hmm. the answer is usually no but i hear a lot of ads and what makes me want to skip those ads in the top podcasts are one if the ad is a harsh interruption of the content i'm not just talking about like an awkward transition mm -hmm. or like you know and she wiped the blood off of her mouth as she chewed into her victim and now this episode is brought to you, but I'm not talking about that, but like where it's Casper mattress right in the middle of a sentence and this dynamic ad is inserted programmatically, uh, dynamically, I mean, uh, and it could be a programmatic ad, but usually so far they've just been uh, host read, but still dynamically inserted. But breaking the sentence, breaking the flow is one reason that I want to skip it. The other thing is if it's the same ad over and over and over, especially if I'm binging on that podcast and I've been listening to several episodes, even just hearing the same ad twice 
really bothers me. And that's a big problem with dynamic ad insertion is that if someone downloads the entire back catalog, mm. they're going to download the same ad for all of those episodes where dynamic ad why, insertion appears. That's why a host read per episode is so much better, right? To make yeah. it, you make it dynamic by making it different. <laughs> well, you I could like do both. Kind of I mean, I had a interview with um, James Cridlin yeah. and Jason DeFilippo on it, and it was kind of a debate. And as Cridlin puts it, he's kind of tired of hearing about stamps.com in Australia. <laughs> so there is a place for di host read dynamically inserted ads. A lot of the bad insertions are on the host. You mark it where you want the ad inserted. If you're not paying attention, say, oh, yeah, at uh, 630, put it in. Well, that's on you. Well, and yeah. sometimes Do even getting it down to the second is not enough. You really have to get into partial seconds in order to put it in the right spot, unless sure. you pick a really good spot where there's an obvious timing I was break. Saying, you need to build that into your show. If you're planning to insert ads, build it into your show. Put the, yeah. put the pause there. I mean, it, if you know- It's you're... like a ballet dance, you know? You should be able to wove it in like a, a piece of cloth, you know? Like sneak it up on somebody. But those those pop in your face ads, like getting punched in the face by Bruce Lee. <laughs> and, you know, mentioning um, being sick of hearing another stamps.com or a mattress ad, I've got to throw this out here. Uh, I'm a casual, serious gamer and a serious, casual gamer. I've been playing <laughs> Borderlands 3 recently. Brand new game just came out in the Borderlands franchise. Uh, and in that game, there's this robot character called Claptrap. There's a spot, I'm not going to spoil uh, any plot point or anything, but there is this spot where Claptrap talks about his podcast. And he <laughs> says something <laughs> about waiting for the mattress sponsors to come in. I love it. I thought, Oh, that's perfect. Someone is a big podcast fan, whoever wrote that script. This actually goes I, I kind of right into Eric's next story, but we'll we'll come back because it's, it's about never making money with your podcast. All these sort of tie together. But James, let's go to um, the article you have here, How to Get Your Podcast Heard. Uh, what's you, going you, on here? You know, this is uh, something that everybody, you know, mills around in their mind, like cutting, cutting the grass, you know, and... Uh, People it, love... Uh, if we just did every round about marketing and growing your podcast, <laughs> people, I think we'd still have the same numbers. Because don't forget monetizing, monetizing, yes, monetizing. Yeah. You know, this article is written in um, April, yeah, this year, and it talks about ba basically uh, the four ways you know to get your podcast heard. You know, get your podcast on, and. It, it's so many things that we hear, and, and and but the thing is, we don't take enough of the time to actually start at the grassroot levels. You know, everybody's thinking so magnificently, it's a grandiose type of uh, a level, it, and it's kind of upsetting, and also it's kind of disappointing for those people who get into it. But you know, it, it's more like it should be walking on crutches, like you know, and. It, what bothers me is like it, it makes this article makes so much uh, generalization. You know, six six hundred and sixty thousand active podcasts, and we know that can be questionable too, right? That's a big question. But what bothers me most about what I'm seeing in these type of articles is that they forget about the how would you say the personal aspects from each and every one of us who most of us are really like how you say one man army who, do, who does this. But it's a little troubling to me, and that's what kind of like shakes me in my head about this. Yeah. So this one here, so they they basically have <laughs> we have a show where I think we give like fifty to hundred tips on like how to market your podcast. Like it's just it's just packed full. Uh, this has four. <laughs> and well, then and the things we the things we know, right? We'll run through them real quick here. Hold on a sec, Dave. Find a niche, find a niche, mm -hmm. and stick to it. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Network and then network some more. Yeah, tell a lot of people. Keep going. Optimize for SEO. Sure, why not? And hold contests and gives giveaways. Eh, maybe not the yeah. best, but you know, whatever. It's one strategy out of hundred. So that's it. I mean, this really is about. This is just. This is a quick hit. Um, Business.com. Like they just needed some traffic, right? Like, how do you market yeah. your podcast? Right. I'll give you four tips that we've all heard, and we'll get some clicks and move on. But um, you know, I mean, those things are fairly solid. Again. Uh, you know, optimizing for SEO, I think, is something that that maybe not most podcasters think about. So we might might want to hit on that a little bit. The whole contest and gives away giveaways, you know, when you have to like trick people into listening to your podcast, probably not going to work. They, they'll get their gear and run. 
Uh, it's the phrase that pays. Stay tuned for the pod <laughs> mic giveaway. <laughs> Listen to the end and don't press skip button. You might get one. No, a lot of this. Dave, what were you going to say? Uh, just I, I was amazed at the uh, second tip where he said, take advantage of social media. Like, really? I, I, you know, I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, this is okay. I found <laughs> this is the problem with the roadcaster. Pro. Sad trombone. Everyone has <laughs> the ability to press <laughs> buttons and make noises. It's going to be a very problematic thing on the round table, but you've been warned. Yeah. <laughs> At least get some unique sounds. Mike Russell, we need unique podcast roundtable sounds. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to punch you in the face. Uh, no, oh, that's great. We need some recordings. No one's going to punch. Dave has that. No? Yeah. Not, not queued that. up. Come on, Dave. No. It's been I think that you long. are right about SEO, by the way. What about it? SEO, I do think, is something that's pretty heavily overlooked. And partly because it's a giant pain in the ass and kind of like voodoo. So it's, it's optimized not a science? for PIA. Well, it, it's really complex. I mean, I, I, I struggle with it, but I will tell you that it generates genuine traffic. If you can catch searches, you're getting people who aren't looking in the normal places. So, Eric, what would be like if you had to tell someone who does, who has never thought about podcast SEO, Daniel, like Daniel, Daniel's never thought about podcast SEO. Oh, ever. Nice. Never. Yeah, never. What, never. What He's a new guy. Eric, what would you what would you say? What would be your first approach for some, for a podcaster who's listening to this who wants to say, okay, all right, and I'm thinking about SEO now. What are the first two two three things that I should pay attention to? I'm no expert in it, and probably the least knowledgeable here, but have solid descriptions of what is going on in the show. And is you this is this on your website? Where is this description? It's on happening? the website. Okay. You want it to be on the website because ultimately the website is the one thing you control. Who's the SEO mm -hmm. for? So the SEO here is for bots, Google. You know, it's actually the same thing. It's for people or Google. Google seems to be favoring legitimately written descriptions. Uh, I have an episode on Mike August. He's the uh, guy who runs Adam Carolla show. Yeah. I actually rank higher than Adam Carolla for him. Mm. And I continuously am getting people checking Why out the show that is? every day. Why do you think that is? I don't think they do much with SEO on Carolla. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no reason to, other than uh, like a producer credit or, or engineer, right? There'd be no, there's no content about him on the site. I would yeah, well, when he's guesting on, they'll say he's there, but right, he's there. I actually wrote, wrote who he is, yeah. what he does, blah, exactly. blah, blah. Which and is great. I get traffic. Yeah. People who wonder mm -hmm. who he is. Well, it makes sense. I mean, Google's doing the thing that it should be doing. It's connecting people who are curious who the heck that person is besides engineer or whatever. Right. What I like to see sometimes, if somebody would just talk a little bit more about having making people aware of sometimes they have to pivot, you know, instead of being locked into these so-called rules. I mean, wh wh how can we actually transfer to people like how to find out that their podcast is going in a direction and it's time for them to pivot and things like that? Is it hard to do that for some people? Because I know it is for myself, but oh, absolutely. you find that, especially with, with you, Dave, you ever hear yeah. that? Yeah, I, I, we just talked about this last week a little bit on the Ask the Podcast Coach. I asked the question, are podcasters open to feedback? And I don't think they are. Truly, yeah. Like <laughs> Because it's my art, man. Yeah, and right. it's like I've been doing this, and I know what I'm doing. And I'm like, okay, but you, you, know, you said the goal was to blah, 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 and that's not happening. So yeah. don't complain if – Yeah. Like I will – like I'm not – I'm generally going to do – what i want i mean yeah. someone might have constructive criticism that i might be like oh yeah we should be doing that um which was probably i mean like i didn't have a i don't think i had a chat on the live website for a long time daniel probably always like we need a chat or people people said it like we want to chat so i finally got a chat like i listened but you know most of them do what i want but i mean don't don't yeah. blame it on the podcast if you're not hmm. doing the thing that people are telling you they want for him to grow yeah, I had people that wanted me to get rid of my cat, and then I had one person that wanted me to get like, like said, how? I'm scared how what the suggestions <laughs> were. And then I had well, one I've, person, I had one person that says that. that yeah, I, I yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, and I had one person who said that I have Glenn the Geek on too much. One, mm. and I'm like, one. the guy brings gold every time he squeaky comes on. I'm like, wheels, you have to watch out for squeaky yeah. wheels. So, yeah. you know, that's not happening. So the negative comment sticks a thousand times. 
more than the, the hundred good comments yep. where you just focus on that negative and we change stuff. But James, you, what are you thinking? Like, are you, is that the long lines, what you're thinking? Like if someone, if having to change your show in order to grow, like maybe you find out that you've got two segments and the book review segment is just being skipped completely, mm. but you love it. But if you just cut it out, your show would be two times as popular because you're just focusing now on like the tech review and not the book review. I don't know. Like, is that what you're thinking? Maybe, in terms maybe, of maybe not. I think the reality is sometimes with a lot of podcasters is that they have to re take a look at their prospective audience and understand that there is a limit, you know, like the particular thing that I do de dealing with um, expats or immigrants living overseas. That's only a certain amount of people I'll, I'll be able to, to communicate with. And that's the reality. And most of them are in transit all the time. It's not like they're in their home nation. So this is a reality that, have to wake up. So if you're doing a, a podcast, say on um, how do you say what are these called? These little bugs in, in Chinese they called um, bi bihu. Well, these little newts. So what do they call these? Uh, Newt works for me. <laughs> these little um, I don't know what they call, but you you can you have to know that not everyone's going to be interested in that. So you just use that as a springboard maybe to do something else. So I think is the pivoting thing has to. We have to show people how to pivot and also stay in their realistic range of listeners. You mean like um, what is a uh, cultural phenomenons in different cultures and countries? Yeah, and that's that's just limited to that, and uh, it can be hard sometimes. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, I think it's twenty six percent of Americans listen to podcasts on a weekly basis. So then you have to look at, okay, how big is my absolute? Like, if everybody that was into my subject listened to it, how many is that? And then take that and multiply it by 25%. And then that's like the ultimate, like if you're just kicking butt like nobody's business, that's the maximum number of downloads you're going to get. Right. Maybe. That's one way of looking at it. And of course, I, find, I find it exciting to know that number. Like I don't find that as a negative. Like you find hmm. out, oh, turns out there's, you know, I... I did. I reported this at work the other day because we found a Facebook page that has like we have a lot of fans, right? And I found this other page that has like two hundred thousand more fans, and and this is a great thing because now we know, we know at least that ceiling. We know we can grow two hundred thousand more people like the same exact niche. That's fantastic news. Not that that person's beating you. It's that now you know you haven't reached everyone like keep going youtube is great about this because i'm in a niche on youtube and uh you know like camera tech review stuff and there are other people that do the same type of channels and i know the potential of my channel if i want to go out and try to make that happen like with podcast you have no idea what your ceiling True. is so daniel dave and i do show about podcasting i can ask them hey what are your sub numbers you know, and we can sort of, if we know each other, we can all ask, like, and, and everyone wants to be honest. They're saying, hey, I'm getting 9,000 subs per episode. You're like, oh, cool. I'm getting five. I have room to grow. Like, let's go. You know, knowing your ceiling at some level is fantastic. And that's much harder to do with podcasts. But it's not about how many people you reach, knowing your target audience. So you have a goal. Um, yeah. I think we can't all be on fire. fire. <laughs> One you way. Can be on fire you... with uh, 100 people. Just 100 people on fire is a big fire. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> One way that you can potentially get an idea for this is combining both the SEO techniques, by the way, major new SEO course coming out soon, it's in production, but um, combining your SEO techniques, have an opt-in on your site, some kind of valuable giveaway like a PDF or something like that, where people sign up for your email list. Here's what I've discovered with my own site, because my site really works well with SEO, uh, or SEO works really well for me. And I've gotten, when I first started really focusing on growing my email list, I was reaching my podcast audience first. So I would tell my podcast audience, go to the website to download this free PDF that goes along with this episode. I stopped making those PDFs. My goal back then was to make one per month to help me grow my email list. I stopped because my email list was growing too fast. Mm. And now I'm to the point where my email list, because of all the people coming into my website, finding that PDF or whatever little opt-in incentive I have that's valuable to them and they sign up for it, I now have more people subscribed to my email list than 
download my podcast. So now it's the complete reverse thing. So now I can use my email list to promote my podcast. And I can now see that knowing my email list is this number, which is something like four or five times what my podcast downloads are. I can now see this is my extremely reasonable ceiling that I could potentially get if I could get all of those subscribers to also subscribe to my podcast. This wow. is um, so another unique feature of StreamYard. I always want to say Stream Lab. I don't know why there was a Stream Lab or something. Stream, stream Labs. Lab. Yeah, there's something like OBS that. Studio. Yeah, that's why it's, it's, it, almost every time comes out of my mouth that way. Okay. And someone just acquired them. Uh, yeah. Who was it that acquired Logic Tech? I think. Yeah, Logic Tech. Really interesting, but kind of makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Great. So, yetis. if be, <laughs> we have the ability to put the the question uh, from the comments up on the screen, so if you have a question and you're in the live chat, ask those. We can put them up. That's always fun, and also hopefully motivation. If you're just listening to the podcast episode, I say just, but if you're listening to the podcast episode, there's more of you than watching videos. So thank you uh check us out live one time podcasters roundtable so youtube.com slash podcasters roundtable subscribe and then maybe one of these times hit smash that like button ring that bell and then maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes right youtubers now get Damn. used to it all right so anyways you have a question ask it uh let's uh move on james going back to the whole money thing you'll never make money in podcasting speaking to you specifically no that's the title of your article what's this about I think that's my article. Um, yes, yeah, it is. Sorry. Oh, did yeah. I say James? Sorry, I meant. That's <laughs> okay. We, guys, we look like twins. We J Dave, <laughs> there you go. Dave, Dave, Daniel, and I are combining names, so I'm just going to put you guys in, in your own fun <laughs> name. <so>. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. This is a uh, life hacker piece, which is essentially writing on the back of, um, I guess it's Jack Reisiter. He does uh, Darknet Diaries, mm. but he did a, a really good study, essentially breaking down how people are making money and it is very very focused on ads mm. now this piece has been pretty controversial has made the rounds because people are saying ads aren't the only way to make money in podcasting and i'm sure dave jackson would be very quick to say that i think he has a book coming out sometime i, I have an I old book and a new book yes apparently <laughs> we all have something coming out <laughs> sometime in the future exactly now the key thing about it though is i wonder if the article isn't actually a good thing because maybe we need to dampen the enthusiasm of, well, I'm going to get into podcasting in three months. I'm going to make money. Maybe people need to see that. No, it's hard. It's extremely hard. You're going to be beating your head against a wall for a long time. If you want to keep doing that, maybe you'll make money someday. I would have had a problem with the article, but they wrapped it up exactly where they were supposed to. And that is that is the point, is that the point is if you're starting from a place of I'm starting a podcast to make money, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And that is correct, right? I mean, it's all about, oh, hey, we got an incoming call. Do you guys hear that? You guys don't hear that because we got mixed minus. Yeah. We got oh, a wow. Google Voice. Caller, go ahead. No, I'm kidding. There's no caller. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said leave comments, not call in. Come on, people. Uh, we don't have a call in line anyways. So, you know, they end up in the right place. Like as I'm reading this, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm like, no, and I'm kind of yelling at the thing and I can see why it's controversial. Also the same way that people, you can't ask two questions in a work email. People only answer one. I bet oh, a lot of people God. didn't get past the first half of the article before they were like, no, forget it. Right. Um, it's not the best article, but it does end up in the right place. Um, again, if you guys, if you, following along if you're listening you want to um see any of these articles i will have the links in the show notes whatever app you're using it should be linkable right there so otherwise podcastroundtable.com but yeah um i didn't have too much of a problem because again the the moral of the story is yeah you're probably not going to make you're probably not going to come into podcasting and make a lot of money and you just if that's where you're starting from that's where your real problem is how would you yeah. go and find like what people need in the sense of like what, what what most people don't know they they want to hear? I mean, you walk down the street and just you know put out your nose and figure, okay, that person needs this podcast. Let me go back and and develop it and stuff like that because it's it's hard to be the the, the predictor or look in your crystal ball, you know. That's why you. I mean, so there's this you know we talk about going with your passion, right? But you you have to do something that you 
want to spend time on, right? You can't be like, oh, mm -hmm. this is popular, right? Vaping is huge now. I'm going to get into it. I, I don't, I don't vape, but you know, I hear it's huge and it's going to be right. uh, cannabis is huge, right? Cannabis in your mm -hmm. vapor. I'm going to do a podcast. Never tried it. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a journey podcast. I'm going to start right now. Here we go. And, um, but so, you know, you really have to start from that place. The whole motivation for podcasting really has to come from, from you and your interest. But I was just going to tweet this out today. I didn't, but I was thinking to myself, I've developed an insane passion and love for playing the bass guitar. I mm. could never be, uh, you will not see a podcast about the bass guitar. So passion's not enough. Like I'm not going to be talking about that. Like I'm, I'm incredibly passionate about it. Have zero interest in doing a podcast. So Davey 504, by the way. What's that? Davey 504, dude, Davey 504. Slappers, come on. Slap, <laughs> slap like now. I know. Slap it, come on, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Davey. Well, the, it really boils down to who is your target audience and what do they want? And is that topic in alignment with your goal? So, like, you know, my audience might want to talk about French toast recipes and downtown Abbey. Uh, I might want to talk about click funnels. And I might want to talk. That's the Cleveland version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. I don't think Dave does that fan. Maybe he does that fan. Part. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I want to talk about click funnels and bit rates. They don't want to hear about that. So you have to find those things where your audience wants that you can hold your audience's attention, but also furthers your goal of whatever that is. If that's selling your own product, and that's where, you know, I I I don't mean to pick on them, but there are so many shows with inspiring stories. And it's so hard to go inspiring stories brought to you by, you know, whatever in a jar, you know, it's like nothing really <laughs> goes with that. Where it's like, if it was a running podcast, you could sell some shoes or something, but it's hard to do that, which goes back to Eric's point that sometimes making money with a podcast is hard. Uh, we had somebody last night on the podcast uh, review show and his goal is to make, he wants to prove his friends wrong that he can make money with a podcast and it's about golf. So he has, some products you could probably tie into that. Sure. But my, my ask, my first question was, what's your product? He goes, well, I don't have one. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't mean, you know, you're out, but that's the number one way to make money is if you have your own product. But, uh, you know, that's really what it boils down to it, for me, at least is, is you have to give your audience what they want and your topic should somehow lead you towards whatever your goal is. And if your goal is getting a sponsor, uh, you have a 90, uh, looking at the math here, a 93% chance of not making it unless you have a really super niche, uh, you know, podcast. So, well, I mean, I was talking to you, wasn't it like the other day where I said anyone can get a sponsor, like sponsorships, right. not necessarily hard. It's how much you're trying to get from that sponsorship, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you might right. talk to 250 people a week about golf and your sponsor is, you know, like, a glove like for you know for golf well, gloves right and like, exactly and you've agreed that that golf glove manufacturer is going to give you 25 bucks per episode boom you're sponsored like mm -hmm. it's a matter of what you, what do you need from it it's such a big it, we talk about sponsorship and that doesn't really encapsulate uh, enough like you know you, you got the top one percent which this article is talking about making livable wages from sponsorship mm -hmm. and you have some people covering their hosting costs right do you guys yeah. think it's possible to, like you hear marketing a lot, they say, oh, you have to come up with something that people don't know that they want. Is it possible mm -hmm. to come up with a podcast that people don't know they don't want it, they don't, they would want to hear yet? Is that possible to, to pull that out of the hat? Like, you know, like a, like an iPhone. Sure. Product? Sure. Yeah. Can That's I tell Daniel's though. story? How are you going to find you though? Because they're not <laughs> looking for it. It makes it very hard. Yeah. There's. In the book coming out in in July, you're gonna tell. Now right? there's a now there's a great example. Daniel's a great example. Dave, we agreed we were gonna keep the, what happened that day oh. a secret. What happens in yeah DC episode two stays of Downtown in DC. Abbey. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Let it out. It's too late now. No, Daniel got into podcasting. One of the things because Daniel's background was he designed websites, and he thought I'm gonna start this podcast. I'm gonna call it the Audacity to Podcast because you have to have the audacity to do it. And instead, Daniel inherited a bunch of people wanting free stuff, like free software. Mm. And it turns out that free people, that people want free stuff, don't want to pay what Daniel's worth to build a website. So uh, that was kind of like, mm, mm, that, that's not really working. But what Daniel did find out by jumping into his podcast was, hey, we don't understand this SEO thing. 
And we want to make it easy. We want our websites to look good when, when people subscribe. And I don't know, I've already got a podcast. We're talking about it right now. How do I make it grow? So Daniel went, oh, okay. Podcaster Society, subscribe and follow, SEO course. So sometimes you don't know what the product is until you jump mm -hmm. in. And so many people make the product first, then go try to find the audience. Why not go find an audience and then find out what they need? The best uh, products to me, I've seen some amazing advertising where like they it, it they have a product and they find a way to tie it in that is very compelling to the like you would have never thought you're like oh I mean you see this in commercials like uh like Home Depot when they did the uh, the rebuild of the Christmas Story house and like I was fascinated they're I'm mean, rebuilding a Christmas Story like and it's a Home Depot ad like it brought me to the product from something else that caught my attention like I want to see the rebuild on YouTube you know what I mean and there's been better examples but. Sometimes it's just, you just gotta be, you gotta be clever. Like it can be hard. It can be very hard, Even, but you can come to it with a product. You just have to figure out who, you know, how do you tie that into something that people want to know about? Too many products want to make the content about the product and it doesn't always right. have to be. It can tie in like, like dudes who like to work on their car probably also like, I don't know, beer or something. I mean, I don't know what it is. Do a beer show, right? There, there could be cross cross uh prom promotion there that john deere I i'm giving you guys my entire deere. book tonight this is great john deere is a great example uh john deere does a podcast for farmers and you think oh great it's nothing but a 40 minute commercial for right, for tractors. tractors it's not they like they talked about on their show like there's a, a problem now with farmers committing suicide because they're getting mm. squeezed by all these big companies mm. and um so by John Deere talking about the fact that here's what you can do and let's talk about mental health and, and, and why do they do this? Because they want healthy farmers. Why? Because what do healthy farmers do? They buy tractors. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's an example of one where it doesn't have to be a giant infomercial. You know, we, we typically don't turn into sham wow on purpose. It's just, it's Saturday at three 30 in the morning and there's nothing else on. Well, and that's, that's brand podcasting, right? That's what they call yeah. brand podcasting. And then a lot of, Brands have figured this out. GE with that whole like uh, fictional podcast and stuff where yeah. you really don't ever really know it's GE and somehow maybe the website you go to or something is GE. But yeah. Uh, one of the things I'm thinking of starting to recommend people who want to eventually have a sponsor is to find some kind of CPA sponsorship opportunity. CPA is cost per acquisition. So you get paid when that company acquires a new customer thanks to you and it's mm. really easy to get involved in these kinds of sponsorships like for a while we've had the audible program at podcast movement i did a video with this uh, company veritone one has this new service called influencer bridge it's free to sign up and i'm looking right now at their list of campaigns that they have and it's not a whole lot but there are some interesting ones there's one that pays uh two dollars for any free warby parker uh, trial uh, to try the fitting thing. There's one that pays $190 per acquisition for an mm. entrepreneur's phone system. So the reason why I recommend that you, or I'm thinking of recommending this, that you try a CPA ad deal first is because then you can really see how well your audience converts. Mm. Right. And you can work on how well you promote that thing because you're not just saying, hey, check out whatever.com but you have to say it in a way that actually compels your audience to get it. And then you have to start thinking, well, is my audience going to really want this thing? Or if you try it for a little while and you start to realize, well, my audience isn't interested in this thing. It's, it's not working. I, no one's buying this, but they'll buy these other things. You can start to learn more about what your audience is interested in. You can learn more what kind of sponsor would be more relevant to your audience, as well as I think for you, as the person doing the ad spot, you can get a lot better when you start out with something on the line. And, and that's why I, I really, one of my biggest regrets from podcasting is having ever taken money from go to meeting, go to my PC, <laughs> go to webinar, you know, all of that stuff that I think we probably all took some money from them at one point <laughs> in our podcasting journey. But I, I hated that because it wasn't really relevant. I mean, I even had GoToPC and GoToMeeting as a sponsor for my clean comedy podcast. None of them are going to sign up for that. But I wasn't really incentivized 
to compel them to sign up because I was just getting paid for the mention and it wasn't really paid all that much actually. Now this is different than affiliations, right? It's basically an affiliate program, right? Yeah. But of some kind of higher caliber, usually uh, like there's, for example, I'm on the influencer bridge website right now, and it looks like you have to be approved for these different offers, which would make sense. They probably want to make sure that you're not doing something illegal or shady in any kind of way. Um, so it's not like just click a button, sign up for an affiliate, and within two minutes, you've got an affiliate link. There's yeah, probably I, some vetting. Ideally, they vet it a little bit to see, like, we know, like, your audience is, you do not have our audience. Like, we're not going to, I mean, if I have a product, I don't necessarily, I don't know that I want it. I think I'm going to be interested in who's promoting my product. I'm I mean, sure. <laughs> even affiliates do this, right? Like B&H or, Am I mean, you can't even get an Amazon account. If you at least tell them what Am what website it's going to be on. I don't know if they check it, but, um, you know, I think you're going to have better success if it is, if it's, if it's vetted as opposed to some affiliate programs that probably are not. Yeah. Um, we have another story, I think James, how to make your podcast stand out. And so it's relevant. We've been talking about this a little a bit. So did, did we not cover something? Cause this is about niche talk. Niche talk I, I really right? think, I really think this is kind of like related to what Eric's, uh, uh second uh, topic was because, you know, it's niche, niche, niche and how does, you know, are you going to make money out of it? But how, what are the crazy things you, you you can do to get your name out there, your podcast names? I mean, you're not going to walk down the street with your, with your pants down and say, this is my podcast. You know, Dave might do that. Yes. I think Dave <laughs> probably tried that in 2006. Yeah, how successful was that? Look where it got him on the round table. So. It was, it was cold, cold and <laughs> it was cold and there was shrinkage. Um, I don't know if we can see that on the screen. There's a lot of things. I just, Dave, I just, I have to, I have to, I it. have to jump in here just, just for the audio listeners only because what yeah. you just did there, you, you said it's yeah, called that... a shrinkage, and then you said what you can see on the screen. <laughs> there, you have to describe in video, Dave, to an audio only yeah, that's true. what you are showing. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding in my hand. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, not, my, it's yeah. getting worse. <laughs> it's, it's getting so much worse. Yeah, I, my phone and uh, what I, my, my uh, license plate has always been podcast. Wow. But I recently went to Sticker Mule. If you go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash Sticker Mule uh, and got some vinyl letters for my uh, back window. Uh, oh, I so, see it. so that's something I've done. Um, and if I was smart. I don't say School of Podcasting, by the way. Yeah. Well, the other thing I was thinking about is if I wanted to, if I want to be really crazy, I could go up to Target every morning at 730, park it in the very first spot right in front of the door and then walk back home and then go get it at five o'clock so that everybody that walked into Target could see school of podcasting dot com. Oh my god! Podcasters going in Target there. That's it. All of them. All the I, or maybe I should. You know what? I could I could park in front of Big uh, Best Buy. It's right down. It's like two doors down from Target. Yeah. Guitar there, Center. You know, guitar Center. Yeah. Any kind of nerd store that would do that. So I had that same idea, but the magnets came out a little bit small. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're not going to be great on the car. They're like. Yeah. Two inches high by three inches wide. Are those sticker mule magnets that you got? Yeah, yeah. I'm more curious in will they hold more than just like a piece of paper, or is it pretty um, much like how how strong are they? I don't know. I haven't tried okay. it yet. I was going to put it on the car. All right, but yeah, oh, it was car. It was twenty car. bucks for fifty. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, it's a great price. I'm going to do that at work actually. But um, and Daniel tweeted out a, a sale. Yeah, I've, guys, I've got a coaster. I just yeah. got my magnets in I the got mail the uh, too. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, all, all of these are right. going to make your podcast huge, James. We're going to blow you guys, up stickers. Do you guys in the states have these little kiosks where you can like put these little like um, uh, postcards and with your ads on it, like in different restaurants? Because we have that out here in in, in Taiwan. Like, do you have mm -hmm. anything like that? I mean, a lot of coffee shops and stuff have like cork boards or something. Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. These little yeah. you know postcards, you can actually put your ads in them in, in like hundreds of them, you know. We oh, have yeah, that yeah. around here. Yeah, like they're um like bigger, a little bit bigger than a bookmark. Yeah. Like little yeah. Yeah, they're actually places bought a, you can do that. I bought a box of bookmarks instead of business cards to hand out. Figuring people can actually use them. Yeah, that's why I definitely like stuff that people can use. Right, because business mm -hmm. cards go to the trash, but a keychain, um, at least a magnet. You're like, okay, I can, I got magnets on my fridge and stick stuff to it. 
um, is better. I think is better, but so is that, is that it for that? Uh, yeah, this is it because this is really crunching it down to a super narrow edge and just wonder how you guys do it over there with stickers, maybe a t-shirt or something or toilet paper. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of like, you know, guerrilla marketing as they would <laughs> call it. <laughs> Dave would do the, the business card or the CD in a library book and all that stuff back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what would you say, does anyone have their favorite or most effective guerrilla marketing technique? Um, like, you know, something you did that actually changed. Uh, here's, I will tell you this, we're in the middle. It's about to wrap up in six days. Uh, not guerrilla marketing. This is paid advertising, but we, I did the overcast thing at work finally. And Wow the most single most effective thing I've ever done to game subscribers. Now, who's to say, are they sticky subscribers? Are they going to be there? I can't tell. I can't track these subs over time. It's even hard to tell. I mean, we got, we were at like a hundred and 117 subs for the month. Um, that brought our price down to like, it's like $3 per subscriber. It's hard to say, but I've never been able to go anywhere and get in theory, legitimate subscribers mm -hmm. uh, because they are targeting your, niche and um you know i trust marco uh, on that on that front uh but we don't know we don't know what we're getting i'm not buying subs per se it's a legitimate ad that people have to click subscribe to so i'll tell you a way that you could potentially figure it out yeah. is look at your growth before you did the ad and figure out month over month what is your growth and then right. look at after the ad is gone then look at your month over month growth I mean, your growth then compared to where you would have been with the trend you were following. So if you're getting, uh, you know, um, uh, we'll just break it down to numbers instead of percentages. If you're getting 100 per month, after three months, you should have 300 new subscribers. That's your standard trend that you've been on. But if after three months, uh, or let's say after six months, you have instead of 600 subscribers, you have a thousand subscribers, that means that you picked up another 400 somewhere along the way, probably from that, that ad. Especially if they're all in oh, using overcast. I mean, it's an overcast ad, so you can track that, the logs for that, how many overcast. Right. The app, the, that actually like, I like that a lot because we can break down by, um, user agent, uh, user agent. Right. I can see if that I feel I feel like with like a hundred subs out of a show that gets thousands, it's a little hard to track. I mean, Dan, you probably have a good formula for that trend. I, I'd have to figure that out. But those are two good two good pieces of advice, and I really like user. I didn't even think about a user agent. Duh. But yeah, we should see a bump there. It should be easier to to, to sort mm -hmm. of filter through that because that's not generally a huge number. Like Overcast is probably not a huge part of anyone's audience. Um, they do good, but they're probably not fifty percent of mine. Yeah, that's interesting. So you might I got an earthquake here. Really like tech. Got an earthquake. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Wait, hold on. Let me put this. You got an earthquake. All right. Well, let's hope no gear goes down. So is that common? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. I <laughs> oh, wow. How, like how big of an earthquake? Um, my ilt, Usually they'd send you a message on the phone. Is it over? But, um, oh, was nah. that what the doorbell sound was? <laughs> no, they send it on the phone. So Did you I heard a weird sound. Okay, I'm, I'm still right. connected. Good. Yeah. Where are you, Ray? It didn't shake the webcam. In San Francisco, they they <laughs> yeah, build buildings to withstand earthquakes. In 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 uh, I forgot where you are. Wait, is it Taiwan? They build the uh, Taiwan. Earth. Yeah, <laughs> the building. We have a building called the Springs. People, we we have a building called Taiwan One Hundred and One. The building moves. It has like a little central ball in the middle that actually keeps it steady, yeah. but it actually moves like this much. Yeah. San Francisco, they're built on like springs, so they like sway yeah. and go. I knocked out one of those giant uh, building weights in Mirror's Edge one time. It's a video game. Uh, oh. <laughs> this uh, is like the most times ever in a podcast I've mentioned playing video games. I do not spend all my life playing video games. <laughs> I don't know. I clarify. We might have a problem here. Streaming is going to make you a lot more money than a podcast. I'm all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. pick, uh, a niche, now, pick a game, be really good at it, and stream away, my friend. In our chat, uh, Baines brings up an interesting idea, which I'd, I'd want to refine a little bit. Um, but I like I like this thinking. He said uh, about the overcast ads. One way to track it could be uh, make an ad specific feed and then three hundred one redirect it after a month. Then you can see the ad activity specifically, and then merge it. Now I would think the ad activity 
you wouldn't want to look at your feed stats for that because feed stats are so unreliable, the actual RSS stats, that is. But what you could do is maybe add some kind of additional tracker to that feed. You can't like really maybe do that with a blueberry yeah. keyword or a pod track keyword or or something like that. So we put uh, it in English again. What would I do next time I create an ad on Overcast? You make a new RSS feed. A new RSS feed. Mm -hmm. That is just a mirror of your current feed. So maybe you're using Podcast Mirror, maybe you're using FeedBurner, something like that. But in that feed, you might you I would suggest that each episode have an additional tracker to it, whether that be like with um, Libsyn's keyword abilities, if that's a thing that you can do with additional feeds, or maybe you're adding pod track or adding an additional Blueberry tracker keyword or something like that. But you're you're tracking each download, but only as it comes from that RSS feed. But Daniel, uh, Overcast is getting us feed from Apple. When, right. when you do it and do an ad on there, oh, you just pick from their catalog, which is oh, Apple. Okay. So I don't know how you can A-B that. Yeah, yeah right. okay. Then then you couldn't really do that. Well, I thought you had a paid service for a second there, but uh, forget <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make you more money. I have to keep looking. Keep trying. Try again. All right. One of the things you ask the question, what's the most gorilla yes. thing that you've done to grow your audience? For me, it was buying someone else's podcast domain. Oh, you remember your gray head. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it worked. It did work for me. I literally overnight, and I mean that word literally, I mean it literally, overnight septupled my audience. That's seven times. Wow. What I did is um, the podcast, Christian Comedy Podcast, the uh, podcaster had announced that he was switching to do more missions work. He was going to end the podcast, all of this stuff. So he had announced that it was ending, but he let the domain expire. I have oh. had a clean comedy podcast. I'm a Christian. I know that uh, a lot of my audience also are Christian or in some way religious or have an appreciation or respect for religious and religious humor sometimes too. So what I did was I bought that domain as soon as it expired, I was able to get it. I knew that his RSS feed was powered through that domain. So I simply redirected that domain's RSS feed to my <laughs> RSS feed. And in the process, though, I did some things to try and help with this transition. For one thing, I made it so that any request to his domain would go to my site to a page saying, welcome, Christian Comedy Podcast listeners. I also, I think I put out a miniature episode in the feed so that for all of these people who hadn't seen a new episode from the Christian Comedy Podcast in a year, they would get this new episode first. And it was just a short episode to say, hey, welcome, Christian Comedy Podcasters. Here's what's going on. And then for my next few episodes of that comedy podcast, I also, again, welcomed them, reminded them kind of what was going on in just like 30 seconds to say this to them. And also for those episodes, I tried to focus our comedy a bit more to something I thought that Christian comedy podcast listeners would appreciate. So mm -hmm. I brought in more Christian humor, more church kind of jokes, more things about that so that they can see, all right, this is a completely different podcast, but yeah, I, I, I get this humor too. It's the same kind of thing. It's still clean. It's still Christian friendly. It's still all of this. And although I did not keep that massive audience jump, I never lost it all. Afterwards, so looking at that trending thing that I was mentioning, I think still in the end, when people unsubscribed or whatever, for whatever reasons they left, I still in the end more than doubled my audience size. And there was a guy who flew up from Australia, came to Cincinnati to visit my co-host and I. Among, he, we were one of his definite stops that he wanted to make while he was touring the US. And he said, I was one of those people. I'd oh, wow. never heard of the ramen noodle before, but when you took over the Christian comedy podcast feed, I liked what I heard and I stuck around. Would 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 gray hat techniques be considered a Christian like thing to do? <laughs> I was, I was wondering curious. that. <laughs> it's like, I stole an audience. <laughs> <I> stole... <laughs> what would you Jesus know, say about gray hat? I'm, I'm thinking along the lines a of concerned. 
thinking along the lines of uh, Christianity here, there's this reminds me in a funny way of this um, incident where uh, some people came to Jesus in the New Testament asking because of some certain traditions. They said, if this husband dies uh, does, and the wife remarries his brother, but then the brother dies and then the next brother dies, and the next brother, and none of these left a, a, any children for the wife, who's wife is she in the afterlife? And they were trying to trap him on some stuff. But I kind of feel like in a way that maybe that's what I did. But I wouldn't really say it was gray hat because I didn't just maliciously take it over. I took it over and intentionally tried to reach that audience. I might've missed some of that story, but it, I'm a little weird that they're just giving away this woman. <laughs> She's <laughs> it, like, you know what? The, the Those dudes are dealers. dead. I'm out. It's the I'm second out. sentence in the email, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A relay. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, Dave, maybe we just approach this real quick because, um, I do the, uh, the YouTube like a, one, like a service announcement. No, the, um, negative reviews with no help in sight. What's going on? Oh, podcast yeah. podcasts are getting attacked with negative reviews. And I, I mean, I like the premise is that do we need reviews? Like get rid of the answer is get rid of reviews. That was my whole thing. It's what's it's, going on. First of all, what, well, the what, article, apparently there is uh there's been um a couple, I, I don't want to say the guy's name, but there've been heavy rumors that there's this one guy that was going right. around and, and he would basically either hire a bunch of hackers or whoever, uh, people with just banks of iPhones that would just leave negative reviews on your show. And apparently this at least started to look like a trend. This is one of those things like if one person does it, sometimes mm -hmm. like the industry goes, oh, we have a problem. Like, wait a minute, we had two people do it. It's like, hold on a second. And his whole point was, look, when when things got out of hand on Yelp, you know, Yelp closes down comments. And I'm like, really? I'm not that much of a Yelp person, but I've never seen that. And, uh, you know, Apple should step in and, and, you know, take over and, and control the, the review process. We need to save the review process. And I'm like, how about we just let it die? Because I personally have, and so I just think everybody thinks like me, but I've never decided of a podcast based on a review. If I have two podcasts and I can't figure out which one to listen to first, I subscribe to both. And then I listen with them and vote with my ears. So I don't know. I, I just, I'm not a huge, you know, review person. I, I, I I've get read review to get a, yeah, podcast. it's social proof. I get that. I know a lot of people love to say rate and review us. It helps us get found, get which it does not. We can get uh, rid of that CTA real quick. Uh, please review us. It helps us. It grows the show. Review yeah. Five stars. Well, you know, the big, like a big irony in this is what little that ratings and reviews do for a podcast because there are some aspects mm -hmm. that uh it does affect certain aspects uh, and i i can't i'm sorry i can't be very specific on that but what I little yeah, dave can it's not enough well I, I just have one i heard at fincon there was one person that would only come on a show if you had x amount of reviews because yes, to him that showed an engaged yeah, yeah. so well ahead, what Daniel. i mean is on the Apple side of things, oh. there there are some algorithms that in in some very small way do factor in ratings and reviews. Pay attention on it though. So is this like a suggested uh, podcast based on well, a certain other podcast? Uh, I, I I can't say. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> they have to kill you. <laughs> but but the irony in this is that at least last I knew or last I could tell, it didn't matter what the rating was. So by right. throwing thousands of one star ratings and reviews at a podcast, it's just as much weight as if it was getting thousands of five star ratings and reviews. Interactions. From the interactions. themselves, YouTube, who mm -hmm. negative comments or voting down um, is is at least shows engagement. People are engaged. They had really? enough. You you caught their attention enough to do something, and that is a signal to to YouTube in some way. So not negative is not always bad. Now I don't know how that affects things, but I mean the, the best is Bandrew who says like if you if you hated it, give me a thumbs down. I mean, he just tells you give me a thumbs down. What he's really doing is he's getting some he's getting more engagement than you might be getting. Um, I have a weird question that I want to ask. It's, good, it's related something to something that I see is happening on um, YouTube where um, 
probably guys already know a lot of people are talking about being demonetized and all that stuff because of the topic that they are talking about. Mm -hmm. And do you think that will affect podcasting in any way? You know, maybe I'm not talking about people who just go crazy on profanity and stuff like that, but the particular topic based on a certain time, would that affect podcasters a lot in today's world? Oops. I it think may. we're going to see it. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we've already seen it to some extent, not so much the topic itself. Um, lately, we've seen how people approach the topic, like Alex Jones, for example. It's not what Alex Jones was talking about. It's how he was talking about it. You know, I mean, just like if you want to talk about, uh, you know, talking about it next right versus left, <laughs> if you can talk about it as much as you want and you probably won't get in trouble. But if you start saying, oh, this side should kill the other side, kill <laughs> all others. Well, that's right. a call to action. Yeah, that's a then, yeah, then that's yeah, when that's, that's illegal. you get in trouble. Yeah. So, uh, James, are you talking more? I mean, because like a lot of uh, like kids channels, um, right, like are getting a lot of things are who... What are you talking about specifically? Because well, okay, how about let's talk about something like a show, like say uh, David Pakman or, or or Tim Pool or something like that. People would talk kind stuff of show? heavy, but uh, political do you see uh, that? news. Excuse me. Uh, he asked, "What kind is political news?" Okay, okay well, not only that, but yeah, we got the children stuff that you know we can understand why they're doing it, but sometimes I think it's it's taking on another type of um, tunnel, regardless if people be talking about um, SJWs or whatever. And um, I, I'm 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 noticing it from my point of view from out here. I can actually see certain things being mm -hmm. pulled over to the side just because of the topic they choose. That's all. I think anytime you're relying on a third party who can make these choices for your revenue or your income or your monetization, you that's where your problem is. <laughs> like these are channels for exposure, mm -hmm. um, and I get it. Like some people do really well, but like you know you got to diversify that, right? If you're on YouTube only and, and ad, YouTube ads are your only thing and right. you could literally do nothing and then YouTube won't tell you what happened. They just got rid of you. Dave mm -hmm. has been with Amazon and just got rid of him. Um, maybe even like good faith, you were doing like good faith practices, but you didn't know this one thing was wrong or one person reported you and boom, you're done. Like you have to diversify that. So you could be doing a breast cancer drive and get kicked off of Facebook right. because, the because AI, there was an right, animated ad on how to check for right. a disease. You, you got to, it's all comes back to owning, owning it. Like you got to own it. Like use these as billboards for your content, but get them back to your list, your website, your, it's your advertiser on your baked in your pocket, whatever it is. Right. So I think, so yeah, possibly things like that could affect, but I think the takeaway is to, to think about how and where you where you're monetizing how that how that affects you don't rely on the third party yeah i think it would also depend more in a case of dynamic ads where you mm -hmm. just go into let's say you're using vox nest and you said give me ads on sports this and that this and that this and that this and that and this and that and then all of a sudden you say something crazy on your podcast somebody could go to that advertiser and say i can't believe you sponsored that monster and they're gonna go mm -hmm. i had no idea what are you talking about huh so that's the part that i think that's stupid on youtube i think it'd be even more stupid on uh, on a podcast but i could see it happening and then th what are you going to do without your point zero zero one seven cents of download so you, you know you're so well they're, they're I, doing other things too dave like um i have had somebody on aviva fry fry and he's a lawyer out of Montreal. You can't get any less controversial than a French Canadian lawyer. <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. Yeah. He's a really, really nice guy, very centrist. He will cover like depositions and things like that on YouTube, but he has been demonetized so many times. It's scary. And they have a habit of demonetizing him, then banning the video, and then all of a sudden it reappears Again, now this is all YouTube, and that's the problem. Is he's inside of their platform with the podcast? It's an RSS feed, so technically you do have one removed, unless you're Alex Jones, and you get kicked out of every you know catalog out there. But people can still add the RSS to their yeah, player. Exactly, RSS doesn't uh, kick you out anywhere. And if you're if you spent your time building your own brand onto your own website, when you when you go away, people are gonna know exactly where to get you. Yeah. I'm going to get you in more than one way. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up.
this has been fun. We're back. Um, we might do it again. Who knows? But we have tech to get back on. Uh, if we get the motivation to go with it, we'll return for 134. I think we will. This is a lot of fun. Hey, I want to thank everyone. Let me know where the uh, one place is that we can find you. And uh, and then we'll head out of here. So, uh, James, thanks for... Uh, well, it's early. It's, it's breakfast time for you, man. So go get some breakfast if that's what you do. If you eat breakfast, sometimes yeah, I think... Well, uh, James Thomas out here in Taipei, Taiwan is eight, coming up at 837 here. You can find us at Four Seas One Family. Very cool. What is the what is the one line uh, subtitle of that? What is the podcast? Uh, we have a lot more in common than we think. All mm -hmm. right. Just because, but the fact that we're separated by oceans is that what you, is that what you mean? Like we have more. Yeah. In common? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So yes, it's a it's a Chinese story about you know uh, people being basically we all related. So that's what it is. Awesome. Very cool. Separation right. is nothing. Check it out, Eric. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, unstructuredpod.com. Well, you have to tell me what the one line, I don't know what that means, so tell me more. <laughs> Informal dynamic interviews with people like Dave Jackson and others. I have a wide variety of interviews, seven FBI agents, CIA agents, people who do body language, podcasters. I'll sometimes have panels like uh, Dave Jackson with Daniele Bolelli talking about language and podcasts. Do you find a thread as an interviewer that goes through your podcast or is it truly random? It's not random, but it does have a lot of range. I'd say communication mm -hmm. would be my favorite thing with maybe a side of crime because I am interested in, you know, what these FBI agents do like if you had to place an ad, where would you go for that show? You know what I mean? Like where Society would you place culture? Ad? Okay. So just pretty much okay. personal journals. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Check it out. Dave Jackson. Welcome back, Dave, man. Thank you. Yeah. Dave Jackson. You can find me at schoolofpodcasting.com where I help you start your podcast and grow your influence. Very cool. And Daniel J. Lewis. Thanks, man. Thanks. After uh, nearly a two year hiatus, I just dumped a bunch of content on the audacity to podcast.com video interviews from podcast movement 2019 and something new coming soon. The audacity to podcast.com. Very cool. All right. Thanks everyone. If you're still listening, podcasters roundtable.com slash guest, we can get you on the show get you on a round here. Uh, subscribe to YouTube. Uh, even though despite my my uh, going on about third parties and stuff, we'd still love a subscribe. So, but you know, I said the website first. So when we get kicked off YouTube because of Dave Jackson, you know where to find us. <laughs> That's shrinkage. Right. Van Hammer coming soon. <laughs> Wave goodbye. We're out of here. Anyone want to slap these? like <laughs> slappers? Slap that like button. Uh, French voice reveal at four million subs. <laughs>